Hello, I'm sorry uh, that I can't be there with you, but it was important for me to say a few words about these two extraordinary artists as they received the George and Judy Marcus Prize for Lifetime Achievement. Jean Renoir once said, reality is always magic. It's an eloquent and a simple statement which speaks to one of the most precious gifts that cinema has given us, which is the revealing of truth, the revelation of truth, and the unfolding of life. Uh, the two men being honored tonight were among the filmmakers who made this gift possible. Richard Leacock, or Ricky to his friends, made his first documentary at the age of 14 called uh, Canary Bananas. I understand that he was ultimately dissatisfied with this film because he felt that it didn't give his viewers uh, the feeling, quote unquote, the feeling of being there. In other words, he had a vision at the age of 14 of a particular kind of movie, a particular way of seeing with a camera before it was even technically possible. I think it's a wonderful story. And uh, D.A. Pennybaker was 18 when he made his first film called Daybreak Express. This film is familiar to anyone who went to movies in the New York in the 1950s. And I actually use a section of it in, in the film I did about Bob Dylan called No Direction Home because it caught something very special about the energy of that time, the search for poetry and reality. So these two filmmakers, both trying to find new ways of making movies, joined uh, Drew Associates in the late 1950s. And this is where the first portable synchronized 16 millimeter system was developed. And young people today need to understand exactly how important a development this was because prior to that, you, if you shot with a sound camera like an Oricon, it was 16 millimeter, it was right, uh, sound directly onto the, to the film. Uh, optical track was very bulky, and this was a major advance. Um, I will, of course, never forget the first time I saw the uh, primary, the chair, and crisis, the films that they made at Drew Associates, and the extraordinary effect that these films had on me and everybody around me. It was, uh, this really was as if a world of whole possibility had opened before us. Um, the films were raw, they were immediate, and they were amazingly dynamic. Uh, they took us places we'd never gone before, factually, cinematically, and poetically. And when Bob Drew went back to work for ABC, Leacock Pennybaker was formed, and this was the production company that created the extraordinary Don't Look Back. I'm happy to say that I was allowed to use sections from this picture, another great Pennybaker film, for, again, No Direction Home, along with this footage that was shot by Penny Baker of uh, Dylan during the later tour. Um, Don't Look Back is not just one of the, the great rock and roll documentaries. It is one of the essential documents of its era. Now you look at this film and remember the feeling of being alive then and the sense of life as we lived it or we'd like to have lived it. I'd like to quote an essay by Ricky Leacock. He says, uh, what am I looking for? Uh, I hope to be able to create sequences that when run together will present aspects of my perception of what took place in the presence of the camera. To capture spontaneity, it must exist. And everything you do is liable to destroy it. Beware. Uh, this is a bedrock truth of documentary filmmaking, and I think of filmmaking in general. And in the careers of these two wonderful artists, you can see this principle at work. They share an extraordinary sensitivity to the filmed image and the recorded sound, how they work on their own, and how they work as parts of a greater whole. Their commitment to art has never been less than total. They're an inspiration to us all, and this joint honor is richly deserved. Congratulations, Donna. Congratulations, Ricky.